Hi everyone, this is Marianne and welcome to my channel and to this seventh video of my series for One Book July 2021. I will link all the previous six videos in the description box. I have spent about two weeks using this planner as normally as I can and making the changes that I felt I needed as I went along. I call it my field test, which is basically using a tool in the field and figuring out if it works, if it doesn't, why it doesn't work, and how you can make it work or work better, or if it doesn't work and you cannot make it work, what other tool can you use instead? I am happy to report that this planner has been working, but it is no longer set up in the same way that I showed before. The field test, or just just using the planner normally, has made me realize a few things and I will share them with you in this video. The first thing that I realized is that the transformer planner is not going to work for me. For one major reason. People transform their planners because when they're working in specific planners, their mindset is on that particular subject. For instance, when they're doing the budget on their budget planner, so they transform their planners into the budget planner. Or planning meals in their meal planners, so they transform it first and then they work on the meal planner or scheduling their wellness activities in their wellness planner things like that their brains just work that way mine doesn't i have only one calendar and planner for everything so i found that i never actually transformed my planner so i took out the covers which thinned down the planner noticeably this is no longer a transformer planner but it was cute to have the transformer planner for a while and so i have also changed up the setup of the sections inside this planner and i believe this is pretty much it for now it's actually already august 1 when i am preparing this video for editing and it will be august 2 when i uploaded because i waited until the very end of july to see if i would still make any changes to the setup but i haven't so this is it. I can now show you the final setup of this planner. First of all, I made a new cover for it. Remember that clear, rigid, transparent cover that I unboxed together with the first set of discs that I got? That is a clear, rigid plastic cover for the A5 disc bound, already hole punched, and I just used my box cutter to trim it down to be a better size match to my A5 slim. As you can see here, it is now narrow. I also have this black adhesive pen, pen loop stuck to this clear PVC sheet. This is just one of the PVC sheets that I used to use for my transformer planner. It is now a pen holder, a pencil holder actually, because this is the Tombow Monograph Zero Mechanical Pencil, which I first showed in my part six of this One Book July series. I will have a more in-depth review of this pencil on my channel sometime in August and I also have another PVC sheet here and this is the same page made of tracing paper that has the image of a plant on it the same one that I have showed before and by the way the black pen loop is one that I it's kind of old I've had it for many many months and if you stick it on plastic it is removable but if you stick it on paper or cardstock it, it, it sticks there you can't remove it anymore the first divider I have on here is for notes and lists. Currently, I just have a bunch of black paper sheets on here. These narrow sheets are leftovers from when I cut down my A5 slim pages from larger paper. I have a lot of these saved up and I use these for lists. I also have these smaller paper uh, squares from an old pad that I have. I thought I might as well use them all up. These graph sheets here are from my personal sized ring bound planner that I used to be on and right here I showed an unboxing of this in a video which I will link down below. I just used my scissors to trim the holes off and then hole punched them with a happy planner disc mount punch and then I popped them onto these discs. I really like the graph paper. The next divider that I have is for my notebook orders, just a list of orders that I have pending. The master list of all orders and their serial numbers and specifications are in a file on my computer. 
The next divider just has a list that tracks my incoming orders from online sellers, just so I'm sure everything gets delivered. The next divider is for random ideas and thoughts. This is actually, well, it's a brain dump, but I don't like the word brain dump. And by the way, these dividers are the exact same dividers you have seen me make before. I did not make any new ones. I did not redo any of these. I just shuffle them around into a different sequence. The next section that I have has my ideas for podcast episodes on my YouTube channel. I currently have three podcasts already up and I will upload a few more. And another uh, section for YouTube ideas, videos in the works, things like that. Next, I have the master to-do list, which I call the running to-do list. Let me just add another thing that I have learned is that if your dividers have no artwork on them that have a visual anchor, meaning there is no distinction between the top and the bottom, you can take out a divider and flip it for the purpose of changing the position of the tab like so. You can flip a divider so that the tab will show up higher up instead of lower down or vice versa. My dividers are just plain white so I can flip these without a problem. In this next section, I have the side reminder tabs and a bunch of sticky notes. You have seen my side reminder tabs in the previous videos. They're still the same right here as you can see. I can also make my own sticky notes if I want to because I have this Kuretake two-way glue. I super love this. It's liquid glue inside a pen that goes on blue when wet and the wet glue bonds permanently. But if you wait for the glue to dry to a clear, then the bond is temporary and you can make a removable sticky note using whatever paper you want. This is very affordable from Shopee and you can use the coins and get a free shipping voucher and I will share a link in the description box. The next section has the months which I have also shown in part 6 of this video series. And then I have this white card stock over here that has no tab but is cut wider than the other dividers because this card stock segregates my daily pages from the rest of the planner. The daily pages is where I do most of my planning, like I explained in the previous video, and there are side reminder tabs on here sticking out, and I didn't want them to interfere visually from the tabs on the other dividers, so I just put in this wider cardstock on the front of the daily pages and at the back of the daily pages. The daily pages are sandwiched between two sheets of cardstock that are cut wider than the regular dividers. When it comes to the Today page marker, I just have this short sheet of clear PVC with the edge, uh, with the edge sticking out. The edge is wrapped with a strip of washi tape so I can easily see it and grab it. I don't like things sticking out at the top of the planner and at the bottom of the planner. That's why I made everything that has to stick out, stick out at the side of the planner instead of at the top. And at the bottom. I hope this makes sense. So that is the calendar part sandwiched between two sheets of cardstock that's wider than the other dividers. And over here I have more sections. This is the section for the novel that I'm working on. Just notes and ideas that come to me and some reminders regarding my ongoing work on the novel. This is the section for my master's degree and I have one final penalty course to take in September so I have the academic calendar printed and then put on in here. The section for my major goals called fly away and sections for my 2021 goals and my 2022 goals all of which support my fly away goals because that is the whole point everything you do for the short term must be in support of your long term goals. I have here a section for projects, just some small things that I'm working on, finishing up, and some obligations to other people, including some money that I have to pay back to my sister and my parents. And then here is a me section that has all my identification cards and also my vaccination card. I have gotten my COVID-19 vaccine last July 24. I got the single dose Janssen vaccine. I still have to stay indoors and avoid other people for 14 days after that vaccination day before I can consider myself as fully vaccinated. 
And even then, I still have to continue using a face mask and practice physical distancing and still stay home as often as I can. And here is this last section. It's really just miscellaneous things. Here is a plastic sleeve that I can use for sticking in some random bits of paper like this strip of document stamps that I always need to have ready with me. And one sheet of graph paper and then this cardstock and here we have the back covers which is a mirror image of the front covers. And that is the final setup of this planner. I think this is pretty much it for now. Now let me have a little tutorial on how I made those clear plastic sheets that I that the ones that hold my identification cards. I have these clear plastic sleeves that I purchased for about nine pesos or six pesos, I forget. I lost the receipt, but it was very cheap. These come sealed or fused on three sides and one side is open because it is a sleeve. I just cut these down and reseal the edges that I want closed. For resealing or for sealing, I use this old clunky impulse sealer that I have had for a very long time. I used to use this for sealing my transparent packaging that I sent out from my old Etsy store from the time when I used to sell physical inserts. I always use completely transparent packaging for that because the post office wants to see what's inside but at the same time I need it sealed against possible water damage or spills from other people's packages that's why I have this impulse sealer and how I do this is pretty straightforward I just cut the plastic sleeve down to size 210 millimeters tall by 95 millimeters wide and then I seal the top edge and then mark the middle because I will be sealing that and then after it's been sealed I take my single mushroom hole puncher because my happy planner punch cannot punch plastic but with a single hole puncher I need a template to know where I should mark the first hole and then I punch the rest of the holes and that is it. The side with the holes are open and that's where I slip the cards in and out. It's a very easy way to add a few cards to your disc bound planner. I felt I had to make this myself because no manufacturer makes card holders for the A5 Slim. The A5 Slim is a weird size and I also cannot put in cards horizontally here because the 95mm width of the A5 Slim is too narrow for cards because the mushroom holes are further in compared with the regular planner round holes that aren't too far into the insert. My friend Tracy Lamons has offered to make me some card holders using a refuse tool, which is a much more convenient tool for sealing plastic, in my opinion. But she lives abroad, and the post office, our post office, has been losing parcels all over. So I told Tracy, let me let let me put this project on hold for now because I'm still waiting on a parcel from another friend in the UK that has not yet been delivered for three months so maybe if Tracy sends me something it will get lost it will be a total waste and I did not want that to happen so we'll see one last thing that I was able to, to decide on in July is how to print my daily pages that have the dates already printed on them I used to use Adobe InDesign but the trial for that has ended but I was able to make the exact same layout on the pages app on my Mac laptop and as you can see the dates are already on here and I like the font as well. I'm glad that I no longer have to use the clear stamps that I showed in a previous video. <laughs> I I don't like I don't like doing that. I'm not a stamp person. I also found a much cheaper paper but with the same quality. This is the brand called Hard copy. The paper I previously I previously used is under the brand Paper One and one ream of that costs over 400 Philippine pesos and I have to buy that online because it's out of stock in stores here where I am but this hard copy one costs only 265 pesos per ream and it's available here. I find no difference between the two in terms of color, stiffness, thickness, and performance with my pencil. They are the same as far as I am concerned so I'm going with this cheaper one. And here I have already printed out the daily pages for the week of August 30 to September 5. That's just 
one week just to try it out. See, the dates are already printed right on the pages and even the birthdays and anniversaries of my friends and family are also printed already. It's much more convenient for me to do things this way. This has been my process for making my planner pages for a very long time. I have videos of that on my channel and I will link some of them below. But I am glad I can now return to that process of making my planner pages that has worked so well for me as well as to that old planning process that has also worked so well for me. So things are hopefully, although slowly, getting back to normal. It is more slower in the Philippines compared to the progress of other countries. As of now, only about 2-3% to of our entire population are fully vaccinated. I am one of them. My parents are also fully vaccinated by now. They are senior citizens. Vaccination in our country is being done in priority levels. The first priority were the healthcare workers. They all got vaccinated first because they are the ones that are most exposed to the virus. The second priority are the senior citizens. The third priority are those with comorbidities and that's where I belong. That's why I got vaccinated this early. The fourth priority are the essential workers like the security guards, drivers, grocery staff, delivery people, etc. And the last priority is the general population, people who are not old and not sick. We still have a long way to go, but as for me, I am doing the best that I can with what I have. I'm vaccinated now, that's one hurdle down. I have other crucial things to deal with, like the two consecutive defenses for my master's thesis, and of course the actual writing of the rest of the thesis, plus a national writer's workshop, and the next batch of laboratory tests requested by my doctor because we need to check if the medication he has adjusted is actually working. I feel it is working, I'm feeling much better now, but we have to have the empirical data, we have to have the numbers on paper, and then we can act accordingly. I'm glad that I now have this new planner that will be my one major tool that can help me navigate all of that. I'm sure I'll find more things to tweak as I go along. My planning system is always being tweaked from time to time as my needs change, but the basic system, I believe, is already set and that is this. And I have to say this has certainly been a very fruitful One Book July project for me. I am very grateful. Thank you to Romani and Carrie for starting this entire thing years ago. I'm sure it is helping a lot of people. And, you know, we don't have to wait for July to start anything really. We can start anytime we want or anytime we need to start. But it's nice if it coincides with July because we have a whole bunch of people who are also embarking on their own One Book July challenges. And it makes me feel that I'm not alone. I'm with you guys, so I'm not alone. I hope you enjoyed all of my seven videos for One Book July this year. If you have watched every single one of them from beginning to end, I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It hasn't been an easy year. It hasn't been an easy couple of years, but we're all still here. I hope you're all okay. I will continue to upload my usual videos for the rest of the year, so please consider subscribing to my channel. Take care, everyone. Bye.